Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Heartland Baptist. We welcome those of you who are here with us in person and also as well those of you who are online. And a special welcome to Matt Seeley and his family. We're so pleased that you're here to share God's word with us today. And we <coughs> pray that God will bless you as, as you bring his message. Also, right off the bat, I wanted to extend on behalf of our church family condolences to Susan Trites on the passing of her dear husband and our dear friend Robert. And uh, we also want to extend our condolences to the rest of the family, Matt and Jen and Jeremy and I believe it's Jasmine and their families and uh, Robert's mom and his siblings. And we just want you to know that our hearts are broken for you and uh, we will be continuing as a church to lift you up in prayer over these very difficult days. Sandy Miller, who was the vicar of Holy Trinity Brompton, often said to his staff when there were crises, the Lord reigns, the Lord reigns. And I know the Trites family have had a crisis, the Lord reigns, our world, is in a huge crisis. The Lord reigns. And I'm reminded from, about that verse from Romans, Romans 12, 21, that says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Jesus has overcome evil. He conquered it on that Friday. And he has defeated all evil. Amen? Amen? God's word says in Philippians, therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven on, and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And through all the storms of our lives, Jesus Christ is Lord. The Lord reigns. So let's come together now to worship and to praise our God and our King. Let's pray. And Jesus, dear Jesus, we thank you for what you've done for us. You've done for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. You've saved us from our sins. And we thank you when we praise you for that this morning. And God, we pray that you would be with the Trites family, that you would be bringing them comfort. And Father, we think of all who might be tuning in this morning or all that are here today. We just invite your Holy Spirit to come and speak into our hearts and to transform our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. We would like to invite you to stand with us and join with us as we worship our awesome God. Is the time to give your 
just as you are before your God. Willingly we choose to mend our hearts, willingly our knees will bow. With all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you. Just as you are to worship God, just as you are before your God, God, God,
Thank you, worship team. That was beautiful. Uh, any children that are here would like to go out for junior church? Uh, I believe now is the, the time. I have a few announcements for us this morning. The first one, I'm sure everyone is wondering what the arrangements are for um, Robert. And uh, this Friday afternoon and evening, there will be an opportunity for you to visit with the family. There are going to be arrangements, I believe, coming out from Carlton Funeral Home tomorrow, so you might be checking that for exact times on that day. And the funeral will be from here, Heartland Baptist, at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, also, you can notice that we are collecting spaghetti items for helping Heartland Helpers, and you're encouraged to bring anything in to go with that. And as well, Next week, we'll have some changes to our COVID plans. We, you know that uh, we will be turning up back all of the pews over. And as of this week, you'll be able to go maskless. Um, having said that, though, I just want to make sure that everyone in our congregation feels comfortable because some of you are feeling great glee at being able to take these masks off and dispose of them. And some people are feeling a little trepidation. We just want you to know that you should feel free wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. It's completely up to you. No one will judge you. We were really attempting to be inclusive all the way through this pandemic and not asking for vaccine passports and all that kind. We don't want to be uh, not inclusive, but we want to know want you to know that you should feel free to wear a mask if you would like. And on that note, uh, if you notice somebody that's wearing a mask, then maybe there that might be a message too to give them some of that socially, social distancing that we've been having. So just a note on that. And there are a number of prayer times. We are continuing to have the church open from six to eight, Sunday, Monday, and uh, Thursday night, Wednesday night is prayer meeting. We had a, a really, uh, I think, meaningful time last Wednesday, and uh, it was wonderful to be together and to feel the Spirit of God. So you're encouraged to do those, and as well, Saturday morning is the men's prayer time, and uh, there's lots of opportunities to pray, and uh, I would encourage you to be doing that. People in our community need our prayers. And the people in Ukraine need our prayers. People around the world need our prayers. So let's do our part. And as well, Elta uh, needs our prayers. Shirley texted this morning to say that she was uh, being taken to the hospital, that she's having a, a real struggle breathing today. So please be in prayer for Elta. And I believe those are all of the announcements. So I'll ask Linda to come for the prayer. Okay, shall we pray together? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can come into your house this day, that we can meet together to worship and praise you. Lord, we know that you are the creator of all things. We know that you are all powerful. And Lord, we know that you love each one. Father, we thank you for those that are here and those that are online. Lord, we just pray your blessing upon them and upon this service. And Lord, we also are thankful and we want to give praise uh, to you and for the offering that is taken up each Sunday. Lord, we pray that you would use, that we would use this to your glory and your honor to continue your service. And Father, also we pray for uh, those who are sick in our midst, those who are not here, the shut-ins, we think especially this morning of Elta. We pray, Lord, that you would be with the doctors as Shirley takes her to the hospital. And Lord, we just pray that you would undertake for her. We know that she's having difficulty breathing 
And Lord, we just pray that your hand would rest upon her. And Father, we do think of many that are not here, that are prayer warriors that we know that in spirit they are and that they are praying faithfully. Lord, we think of Marguerite and Eloise. We think of Jerry and Violet. Lord, we think of Gary and Aldine. Father, we also thank you for Delton and Marcia when they can come. Father, we just pray that your hand will be upon each one of these people. For Lord, we know that they love you. We also think of Laura Land and Hoot that have not been feeling well recently. And Lord, we just pray for them, that you would touch them and restore them to strength and health. Father, I know also that Judy struggles with her back and that Dale um, struggles with some problems with him. So Lord, we pray also for them. And Father, we think of Dorothy. Lord, we continue to pray for Dorothy and for Greg. We know, Lord, that they uh, need to really rely on you in these times. And Father, we just pray for them, and we ask that you would bless them, and Lord, that you would make yourself so known to them, that you would wrap your arms around them and comfort them. Father, we also think of the passing of Robert. Lord, this is going to leave a real hole in our church, in our hearts. Father, we know also that Robert gave himself to you many years ago, and that he was a strong witness. And Father, that he knew that he would be with you in eternity. So Father, we just ask that you would wrap your arms around Susan and her family, her boys, and Robert's, Robert's extended family. Father, for we know that you know their hearts, you know how they grieve. And Father, we mourn with them. So we just pray that you would undertake for each one at this difficult time. And Father, give them your peace that passes all understanding. Father, we also pray for the Ukraine today. Lord, our hearts go out as we see the devastation in that country. Father, we think of the young children, we think of the, parents, the mothers and how they're trying to escape um, and get into refuge, refugee camps. And some have refugee camps right there in the midst of all of it. And Father, we just pray that this war will soon cease. That Father, that you would undertake, Lord, that you would turn hearts to you. And Father, that you would keep the devil at bay, that he would not cause any more devastation there. Lord, we know that you're all powerful and we know that it's in your time that all things happen. So Father, we pray also for our country that for the leaders that are meeting, Father, we just pray that you would help them to turn their self to you, their hearts to you, seek your wisdom. And Father, for our country, if we have people that come here, that we would be ready to help and to step in and to be those refuge, refuge camps that needs to be. Father, we just thank you that you are a mighty God and that, Lord, you see all things and all things are in your hand. Father, we also thank you now for this service. We thank you, Lord, um, that you uh, have given Matt the wisdom and the um, your words. So Lord, we just pray your blessing upon him. We, are, we pray your blessing upon your word that Lord, as you speak through him, that our hearts would hear your word and Lord, that we would not only be hearers, but Lord, that we would, we would be doers for you in this coming week and weeks ahead. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious and holy name for his honor and his glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
If you have your Bible this morning, I'd ask that you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. begin reading in verse 3. I'll read farther than we're going to cover just so that you can see the context. But uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same suffering that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. These are tough times as a church family, aren't they? When these things happen, when we lose someone that we love, it it hits hard. I don't know Robert as well as you guys did, but even just receiving the text, as, as someone who's part of the family of God, you feel for the family. And I know that not only are the trites grieving today, Heartland Baptist is grieving today. And I'm amazed how the Lord just works things out. We sang this morning, like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. And I want to read the words to another song this morning that shares the same thing. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. That song always gets me. And I think the reason for it is because it so eloquently expresses the feeling of a man's heart. A man who was going through great difficulty. And he was crying out to his God. Isn't that why we love Psalms so much? We run to the book of Psalms because we see David say, God, have you forgotten about me? Because that's how he felt in his heart. God, have you forgotten to show me favor? Where's your grace? Why have you forsaken me? And that's why music and poetry and things can mean so much to us. When peace like a river. Now, I know you've mostly been in church long enough that you probably know that the word peace is a big deal in Scripture. We find it throughout, and the Hebrew word for peace is shalom, and and peace is a a strong connection of wholeness or wellness. Uh, You still, if you meet someone who is Jewish today, they greet you with that word, And when they're greeting each other with that word, it means that they are wishing peace. Not just a quietness or a happiness, but a sense of wholeness that God is in control and everything is as God intended it to be. So there's a deep meaning in the word peace. We know that it's a fruit of the Spirit. Paul tells us, 
that we are at peace with God because of the Lord Jesus Christ. That does not mean that we always feel peace. It does not mean that we walk around smiling and filled with joy in our hearts all of the time. Because life is difficult. Life brings challenges. Life brings the unexpected. And so it as well begins with this kind of peace, this kind of wholeness, this kind of trust in the Lord. And that song, if you've not heard the story, or most of you probably have, was written by Horatio Spafford. He was a successful attorney in Chicago in the 1800s. They had four daughters and one son. The son was lost to scarlet fever. Very soon after, the great Chicago fire occurred and it consumed Chicago and he lost almost everything. He put efforts into helping rebuild and helping the homeless, and he did a lot for the Lord. Later on in 1873, decided the family needed to go back to Europe to, to have some time to visit some friends and see family. But he had some business still to take care of, so he sent his wife and daughters on ahead. They were on a luxury liner, And as you know the story, you know that during the night, somewhere off the coast of Ireland, that ship collided with another sailing vessel and sunk. And all of his kids were lost at sea. His wife actually managed to survive by clinging to some rubble. And she was able to get to Wales where all the survivors were taken and she cabled home to her husband just the simple phrase, Saved alone. He immediately booked a passage across to Wales. When he got to the ship, he told the captain, when you come to the place where the Ville du Harve went down, the ship that his kids were on, please come and get me. I need to see it. So on a cold, dark December night, early in the morning, the captain knocked on his door where they believed the ship had gone down. Spafford walked out into the darkness and stood in the freezing wind in the darkness of the night, and he wept with grief. And he said, as he went back to his cabin, he couldn't sleep. And so he sat down and he began to think, and to write. And he wrote these words, when sorrows like sea billows roll. I'm a visual person, so I imagine standing on a ship in the darkness of a cold December night, all alone. Everybody else is asleep, and you just hear wave after wave after wave. And you hear your own tears of agony, having lost now all of your children for somewhere in that very spot. And he said, I have peace. How in the world can somebody in that situation Write the words, it is well with my soul. I want you to know that that did not come from the heart of a man. That came from the heart of our God. A God, as we read in Corinthians, of all comfort. When there is great personal grief and sorrow, we can, through God's help and through God's strength, find peace. Find the hope we've sung about this morning. Find that 
God, even though everything seems to crumble, is right there with us. And when we see him, and when we know him, and when we experience his comfort, we too can say, it is well with my soul. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And we don't have time to get into all the details of this passage, but I want you to understand that the human author, Paul, is facing great difficulty. Uh, later on, he goes on and he, he says, we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Two verses later than the, the passage I just read. Paul has felt pain and agony. He has felt great loss. He says in verse 9, indeed we felt that we received the sentence of death. Paul is going through great difficulty. And as he goes through great difficulty on his own, not only through the trials from without, but if you read all of 2 Corinthians, you'll see trials from within. He was being attacked by the very people he had led to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, blessed be the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. In the midst of agony, in the midst of trial, in the midst of his brothers and sisters coming against him, he says, I bless my God. How? How, how is that possible? Because he comforts my soul. And really, all the way till the end of verse 11, he is expounding on how God has comforted him in his time. And he wants to share that same comfort with the people that he's writing to. This might be the greatest passage about comfort in the entirety of Scripture. Blessed is God. Why? Look at the titles that he's given. Uh, the Father of mercies. I want you to notice something. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. You notice how he doesn't say the Father of comfort, but he uses it when it comes to mercy. There's a difference there for a reason. He's a Father, He's our Father. And he is a God of mercy. He's a God who wants to pour out his compassion, his pity on you. Paul understood the difficulties of life. And he found God's mercy to be real. He found his mercies were new every morning. There's a, a prayer in the, in the, that, that's used often in synagogues. It says, Our Father, merciful Father, ever compassionate, have mercy on us. That's what Paul is getting at. Uh, oftentimes in Scripture, we see individuals going through great trials. David went through great trials. Moses had great trials. We find that trials are not something that, that we get to avoid in life. The book of James says they just keep coming. And we go through difficult times. And when we go through these times, we will find each and every time that we have a father of mercies who is filled with compassion for you. He's filled with compassion for me. Even in great distress. Paul says, I, in the midst of my sorrow, I need to praise. I need to bless my God because he's the father of mercies. He's the father 
of mercies. And he's the God of all comfort. One of my favorite passages in the Old Testament is Isaiah chapter 40. In the beginning of Isaiah chapter 40, we read, Oh, comfort my people. The cry of the, the preacher's heart was, God, come and comfort us in our time of need. The Greek word for comfort is perikalesis. We get the word paraclete from it. And it really is something that's familiar. It has the idea of one who comes alongside to help in our time of need. And I love how the Bible, just with the smallest of words, just takes things to another level. He's the God of all comfort. He's the God who always comes alongside to help. Because the reality of life is not only do we go through trials where we lose people that we love, we go through great physical trials. We go through emotional trials. We face financial difficulties. We face different things in life. And no matter what it is that we are facing, he's the God who can help in all. Because he's the God of all comfort all the time. You know, so often when we hear comfort in our world, we, we think comfortable, like the clothes you're going to wear when you take the church clothes off afterwards, or the big cushy man chair that every man dreams of that the dog or cat usually claims. Uh, we, we think of being comfortable. Maybe for you, comfort's being out in a cabin in the woods with a gun ready to take down some deer. Maybe for you, comfort is different, but we, we think of comfort as this ease, but that's not what comfort really is. God's not saying, I am the God of all comfort, and because I am, I have come to give you a soft, easy, cushy life. It actually comes from Latin roots as well, and the word means strength and being brave. It's not talking about an easy life. It's talking about having strength when I need it most. God comes alongside and gives us what we need. He gives us strength. He gives us even courage. He's the source of comfort. And without God, there really isn't comfort. I love the book of Job. Job is filled with a lot of lessons that we all need to hear. But one of my favorite things in Job is when Job looks at his friends and says, you guys are miserable comforters. <laughs> You're not good at this job. Job was finding comfort in God, not in his friends. True comfort comes from the Lord. He's the source of comfort. And if we go home today and we turn on our news or we open up Google or we open up Facebook, we are going to see a world filled with heartache today. You're going to turn on the news and you're going to see something else got bombed in Ukraine. And you're going to see, if you carefully read, that there were some 82 people beheaded in the Middle East yesterday. You're going to see horrible things happening and heartache happening. And you're going to, if there, you still do it, read a newspaper. And usually the headlines aren't the good ones, are they? The big bold letters typically are, are the agony that our world is facing. In the New Testament, when Jesus was about to leave, he says, I will not leave you comfortless but I will send you another comforter just like myself. What our world needs is God. What I need today in my situation is the help, the comfort, the strength, the mercy of my awesome God. He's a comforter, God is. Christ is a comforter. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. And that's why Paul can write the words, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength.
Paul had no ability to, to make it through, but he found strength in someone else. The God of all comfort, the Father of tender mercies, shows his compassion, gives us strength. The Lord is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The Lord is always near us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He is the supply of all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And he says this, if God is for us, who can be against us? And in Romans chapter 8, there's that beautiful passage where he just lists off and says, can anything separate us from the love of God? And that's not an all-inclusive list. The list that's given there is to remind you that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. If Christ already made the supreme sacrifice for me when he died on the cross, then he is willing to help me with the little things in my life each day. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And then he goes on and he says this. God is a God of comfort. He's the father of mercies. And then he just clearly states it. And he comforts us in all our afflictions. Not only is this God these things. Not only does he have mercy and have the ability to comfort he does it every single time. He comforts us. He comes alongside of us. He gives us the strength that we need to face the situation that we're in. Because he comforts us. So often we can feel that God is so far away. That he's distant that sometimes we feel he might not even be there. Sometimes, maybe like David, we look at the vastness of this universe that he's created, and we just say to ourselves, what is man that you're mindful of me? But our God is a personal God. He is with us in our afflictions. The word affliction there means pressure. It means like we feel like we're being crushed. And no matter when that is, he is there all of the time. And, and the reality is, is you're going to feel pressure in different ways than I do. Even in the midst of going through the same trial, you're going to face that trial in a different way than I do. And God will comfort you exactly how you need to be comforted. And he'll comfort me exactly how I need to be comforted. Because our God is a God of all comfort who comforts us. What a wonderful promise. He comforts us. But I want you to notice one other thing. So that. God doesn't just comfort you for the sake of comforting you. But he's going to strengthen you and encourage you and teach you things so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And I love that so often we, we, we think, well, because I went through this, I can help the same person. But when we go through a trial and God gives us strength and God shows us his mercy and we rely upon God, we are then able to share that comfort with anyone who's going through difficulty. Sure, someone who's gone through cancer understands somebody going through cancer greater than someone who hasn't. But that doesn't mean that you can't be a blessing to that person because you haven't had cancer. You can still love them and share with them and maybe just be a shoulder for them to cry on because somebody was a shoulder for you to cry on because God showed you some things and you can take what God taught you and you can be there for others. And the reality of today for Heartland Baptist Church 
is we need each other. Because someone we loved is not here. Now, praise God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I would dare say our dear brother's having the best day he's ever had at the feet of our Savior, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. His faith became sight. The thing we're all looking forward to and longing for, our brother is experiencing in a very real way today. And praise God for that. But we've been left with an emptiness. There's a hole in our hearts, and there's a hole in our church. And we need each other in ways today that maybe we didn't last Wednesday. We have a dear sister who just lost everything. And she needs the love her church can give her. There's some kids who just lost a dad. And that's a tough situation for anyone to go through. And they need to feel the love and the comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ today. But not just today, tomorrow, and on Friday, and next Saturday, and next Christmas, and on and on and on and on. And some of you have lost and felt the love of Jesus in your life. And you know that you can take that love that you experienced and share it with the Trites family. And that's what the church is supposed to do for one another. We're supposed to help each other in our time of need. We don't just get comfort for us. We get comfort so that we then in turn can comfort somebody else. We are comforted by God so that we can comfort somebody else. I know that in your life you have felt the strength of the Lord. I know that there are times in your life where you have seen his mercy so real in the moments of life. I know that you have felt, even when it shouldn't be, you have felt peace in your heart. And you can share that peace with others. The last verse of It Is Well is the one that really hits me every time. So we go from peace like a river when the sorrows like sea billows roll. And then though Satan should buffet, though trials shall come, Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. And Lord, haste the day When my faith shall be sight and the clouds be rolled back like a scroll, the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. There's coming a day where there will be no more tears and there will be no more sorrow. And there will be no more pain. And there will be an eternity of us always being able to sing, it is well with our soul. But what do we do until then? Because the sorrows are going to come again. We find our God of comfort, our Father of mercies, And we allow him to come alongside of us and strengthen us and encourage us. And we encourage one another as we go through this difficult life. Why? Because I'm forgiven. And 
God shed his blood for me. And the worst this world can do to me is send me to the feet of my Savior. And that's a pretty good deal. So let us run and find comfort. Let us run and experience his mercy. Let us make sure that we comfort each other in our difficult times. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because then one day, I'll cross the river. And I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory. And I will know he lives. Heaven is a sweeter place today because our brother is there. But earth is a little more dim because he's not here. So let us run to the God of all comfort and allow our God to minister to our hearts and to our souls because there's coming a day where we will join the choir in heaven. And until that day, may we be able to say, because we trust you, because we know you, because you are God, it is well with my soul. Father, thank you for this day. Lord, it's always hard for us as humans to say goodbye. But Lord, we're thankful that our God loves us so much that he is a merciful, compassionate God. You love us, God. And you are coming alongside of us in our time of need to give us the strength that we need. And Lord, we thank you that we can experience your peace in the midst of difficulty, that because you live, we can go on knowing that we will be with you forever and ever and ever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for the hope we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. God, comfort Heartland Baptist Church today. Show yourself real to each and every heart. For our sister Susan, Lord, just show her your love today. May she understand your mercy and your grace and find strength today in you. And may we as believers come to her side and show her the comfort that we've been comforted with. God, may we be able to say it as well with our soul. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for welcoming my family to yours once again. We always feel home here, and we appreciate that, and uh, we appreciate your pastor so much. He means a lot to me. So uh, let's just close our service in prayer. Father, thank you for meeting with us today. Thank you, Lord, for the peace we've sung about, for the hope we've sung about. And Lord, all of that comes from our great God. And Lord, because of your wonderful gift of salvation and because you live and the tomb is empty, you've shown that you have given victory over sin, over death, and over hell. And Lord, we look forward to that day when our faith will be sight. And until then, help us to go on in your strength facing each challenge that you bring in a way that would honor and glorify you. So, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. And as we go from this place, Lord, might we take the name of Jesus with us and share it with those who need it this week. And, Lord, we thank you that we have a God who will comfort us no matter what this week lies, no matter what you bring. You will be with us to give us the strength. May we be encouraged with that today. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks.